So welcome everyone back to another ranking video. Today we will be looking at every single map from Stumble Guys and ranking them from worst to best on many different points such as enjoyability, map design and ultimately how well put together the map is in general. Without further ado, let's jump straight into the list. So easily in last place we have Jungle Roll and not only does this map look nothing like a jungle but the obstacles are so simple and boring especially considering the fact that there's only one path which means you'll be travelling in a straight line from start to finish. So you may be wondering what would I have done differently? Well there's a couple of ideas I have for this one. Option 1 take some inspiration from Fall Guys' treetops tumble, incorporate some different paths and more interesting obstacles rather than just some slow spinning logs and mud pits, and again make Jungle Row actually look like a jungle. And option two, completely transform the map into a survival game, similar to Fall Guys rollout, except it would be a giant tree stump you're rolling on. Maybe my ideas are crappy, but anything beats the current Jungle Roll map. Hello again everyone, so for number 20 we have Rocket Rumble. Rocket Rumble is where you have two teams and it's basically like capture the flag but with different number of flags. The goal is to capture as many flags as you can by standing around the flag for a certain amount of time which will then give you a point. The opponents can take over that flag at any time and you only have a limited amount of time. You have rockets used as weapons to knock other opponents back. We gave this rank 20 because the rockets in that game aren't very accurate so it wasn't fun to play. The rockets also wouldn't go that far so you would have to be close range to hit your target. Another thing is that for us it was so boring. For two minutes all you would do is just fire rockets while trying to take the flag and some people were just hugging the flag and you couldn't even get to it which wasn't fun. The map is also quite bland and I think they should add something more interesting like new obstacles like the trampolines in the game or something like that. Overall we didn't enjoy this game that much and so that is why it's ranked 20. Let me paint you a picture on why I don't like Paint Splash. It's boring. Despite being called Paint Splash, this map has literally nothing to do with paint besides the pits you fall in when you miss a jump. How about instead of being on a random sky island, it's set in some sort of factory? At the start of the round, every player is doused in a certain paint colour which corresponds to which platforms they can jump on. For example, red players can only take the red paths green players can only jump on the green obstacles, etc. This would be an interesting dynamic and certainly one with a lot of replay value due to having new areas to explore depending on which colour you're given. This one is too short and very one note. You're essentially climbing up a hill while dodging bowling balls. Cool, but that's not enough. For this game, my inspiration for improvement actually comes from a Mario Party 3 game called Boulder of crap I messed up my lines again. For this game my inspiration for improvement actually comes from a Mario Party 3 game called Boulder Balls. So instead of just being a all versus all game, Cannon Climb would become a team game. Half of the remaining players operate cannons while the other half has to climb a steep slope, but the slope would be protected along the way in order to assist the climbers with climbing up the slope. If the climbers can get half of their team past all of the cannons to the finish line, they would win. If the cannon team can hold off for long enough, they'd win. And that's all I have to say about this one because I've screwed up my lines for this one like five times now. So that's my focus on cannon climb. Let's move on to the next entry on the list before I mess up again. For number 17, we have Stumbles. What the f? How did you fucking fuck that up? For number 17, we have Stumble Soccer. Stumble Soccer is where you have two teams, like Rocket Rumble, and three footballs. You have to see which team can score the most goal in a couple of minutes. You just have to use your body and push the balls. That's what she said. We gave this number 17 because it is basically the same as Rocket Rumble. Quite bland, two teams, and quite boring, but a little bit better. I quite enjoy being the goalie and seeing Luke lose most of the time. Oh, uh, you know what? I'm going to kill myself. But that was all that was good as most of your teammates would just run after the ball and no one would protect, protect the goal. The space was also small and it wasn't a big pitch. 
For number 16 we have Super Slide. Super Slide is a map where you're going down on this water slide and you have to jump or dodge some obstacles to get to the finish line. There were loads of obstacles in the way like a fan at the end and a whirlpool in the middle of the map that sucked you. That's what she said. It was fun to race with other people and I quite enjoyed it a lot. The reason why we gave this number 16 is because people knew shortcuts for the map and stuff and would take shortcuts. For example, you could jump from one slide to another and jump on the walls etc. This ruined it for us and it wasn't a fair game as most stumble guys don't know how to do that stuff and it gives us an unfair advantage. Another generic race, this time we bring you Floor Flip. At this point in the list I should probably elucidate the fact that a large percentage of the maps in this game are either much too short or too plain and this map is just really uninteresting. You step onto seesaws and hope that the other players will cooperate and weigh down your side of the seesaw. Amazing! You want my advice on this one? Just delete the map because I think this game would be better off without it. However I gave it 15th because it, at least it actually has a unique gimmick unlike likes of paint splash and jungle roll for number 14 we have not under and over but over and under i give the punchlines around here got it over and under is a map with loads of obstacles and you can try and get through to the finish line not english line but finish line ah! One of the obstacles are the poles which move in different directions of each other and you need to get through them without being hit which is literally impossible. There's also a staircase at the end which you have to climb and the stairs keep disappearing one by one and they will reappear again one by one. We gave this number 14 as when you try and dodge the poles you can actually climb the wall which I saw in one video and the poles are just very annoying to get through. The stairs are also annoying to climb because I'm at the game and also Luke will be ready to punch you at the top of the stairs with his pay to win emotes and knock you down the stairs again. This wasn't really a good map but it was better than the others and it was more fun and entertaining and Luke enjoyed punching people down the stairs. I see heights, but I don't see any heights on this one. It's a quick climb to the top and an even quicker descent to the bottom. No avalanches, no icicles breaking holes in the ground, and no real sense of being on a mountain whatsoever. I do kind of like the unique ice physics, and this game feels a little bit more fresh than some of the other races, but once again, I'm not a fan of this one. I see heights needs to be way longer and actually feel like I'm ascending up a mountain. What if instead of just sliding down, you're given a pair of skis and you get to ski your way for a series of fast paced obstacles, rather than a sorry looking slide with a few bumpers. Coming in at number 12 we have Tile Fall. In this map there is a bunch of tiles and you have to get to the finish line with these tiles. The only catch is some tiles will fall when you step on them but some will stay standing. This game was quite good as it had to make you think about which tile could be the right one and which tile could be the bad one. The Tile Fall has also come from Squid Game where they had to take a chance which glass square is the right one. The only problem with this game is that some people, like me, held back and let people do the tile floor for me so I had a clear path so maybe they could fix that. Pivot Push just misses the top 10, but in this case, that really doesn't account for much. It's a similar idea to Floor Flip, where everyone has to work together for progression, as the pivots will only move if a significant amount of force outweighs the other side. After that, you cross a bridge full of pendulums and slide down another crappy looking slide to get to the finish. I'm also out of things to say for this one. Coming in at number 10 is Humble Stumble. I like how them two were to rhyme. Would you shut up? In this map, we have obstacles like sliding blocks which you can try and dodge, and near the end, you have these spinny poles. For us, Humble Stumble wasn't a bad map. For us, it was kind of fun, and it was fun to see who can try and beat who. I also like the idea of the sliding blocks, which was creative, and how we have to dodge the spinny pole thingy. The only thing I would say about this map is that they could have added more obstacles to make it more interesting and try put less trampolines at the start as we don't need that many trampolines because there was like 10. 
This race is all right, but ultimately could have done with a lot more. Instead of just having rotating obstacles, I want to see more than just a straight line. So why not have it so that the racetrack has lots of twists and turns? Also, the floating platforms at the end of the course are very random and don't really contribute much to the course or the theme that it's trying to go with. Finally, we are creeping into the good minigame territory. Bombardment is the first survival game on our list, and arguably a very rare minigame too. However, I do like the resemblance to Mario Party 2's Bombs Away, but with a more spleef kind of approach, where the cannonballs destroy the floor tiles, and the stage design actually feels unique on this one too, with the stage being set in the middle of the sea, with a pirate ship trying to destroy you. It's a shame that this game can only come up in round two, as this only ever appeared in one of the videos of our series, and we weren't really able to get much perspective from it. Coming in at number 7 we have Lost Temple. This map has all kinds of obstacles like massive axes that swing from below trying to hit you at the start, spikes that come up from underground and try and give you a good shove up the arse, you have spiky logs that roll and charge towards you, we have fists that try and punch you off a platform and you have to try and dodge them, and finally you have a massive boulder charging at you and you have places to hide so you don't get hit by it. This map was one of my favourites and I enjoyed playing it. It was creative and it was definitely better than most maps on the list. Luke enjoyed punching people into the boulder at the end. Overall, me and Luke enjoyed this map. <laughs> Coming in at number 6 is Lava Land. Lava Land is where you have to survive on these platforms while they sing, and new platforms will rise. It will get more intense and difficult as time goes on. As time goes on there will be a fewer platforms and the lava will start to rise. Me and Luke don't know that much about this game as it is fairly new and we haven't played it before, but looking on some other people's footage, it looks good and a lot better than other maps we have come across. into the top 5 and I'll admit Lava Rush is actually pretty cool. It's not just a straight line like other courses and the lava heavily influences the stage but most importantly it actually feels like you're racing inside a volcano and not just a poorly decorated course. Furthermore this race has a little bit of challenge to it especially at the end with the platforms travelling down the streams of lava and if you thought that's it then don't forget that fireballs are fired around certain parts of the course so there's always something to keep your eye on. Lava Rush is a fairly rare course, but a unique and fun one nonetheless. Laser Tracer is a really fun survival game where you must dodge waves of lasers that progressively appear in larger numbers as the time moves forward. Unlike most other courses on this list, Laser Tracer actually takes a little skill and good decision making as you'll find yourself constantly jumping between different spots to avoid being zapped and the somewhat slippery platform adds a little extra to the difficulty. We are now in the top three and coming in at number three is Honey Drop. This map is very similar to Minecraft Spleet. With Stumble Guys, you have to jump on these platforms. After a few seconds, they will disappear. There are multiple different platforms you have to try and get other people out. On some of the platforms, there is this honey substance which will slow you down for a couple of seconds. Me and Luke really enjoyed this map as we have played something similar to it like Minecraft Spleet, so we have some knowledge to it. And when it comes down to two people, it is really intense and entertaining to watch but when we lose we become very salty and we quit the game This is a really fun race, I love the anti-gravity and I love the space related obstacles that come with it. There's rotating platforms and giant planets you must run around and despite my disapproval towards RNG outcomes in video games, I quite like the ending where you must choose the right launcher to reach the finish as it has a fun element of suspense and a little bit of surprise too. If you're still wondering how this ended up in number 2, I really love the unique style this stage has but also how fun it is to race on and I really wish the the other races could have been as well thought out as space race. 
And finally, at number one, we have Block Dash. And this is honestly one of very few mini games that I'm going to miss playing on once we move over to Fall Guys. Block Dash is essentially hole in the wall, except with blocks and lasers covering the walls. Over time, the blocks form quicker and in more challenging formations, making for easily the best survival stage and the best stage in the whole game. And the purple neon design really makes this level stand out among others. So I'm gonna keep this one short and say a big thank you to everyone who has watched the video up until the end. Hopefully next month we will be making our PVZ ranking video, but if not, just know that it's on its way. And with that said, we will see you in the next video. Goodbye.